Hi everyone, this is Stephen Dempsey. Serif just released a significant update to Affinity Photo for both the desktop and the iPad. Today I'll be taking a look at one of my favorite new features on the iPad version. But first, let's glance at what's new in version 1.9. Path text is nice. You can now run text along the outside and inside of shapes and paths. Using the new Divide Blend mode is a quick and easy way to remove a color cast in your image. I actually didn't realize how much I needed the elliptical marquee to start from the center to make selections. It's actually very useful. You can now use the Liquify tool non-destructively. It appears as its own separate layer. I'll be talking about linked layers in detail today. Syncing purchases makes things a lot more streamlined. You just need to sign into your account through the app and then you'll have access to everything, no matter what device you're using. Okay, as you can see, there's a lot to talk about, so let's tackle it a bite at a time. Today I'm going to discuss linked layers. With this new functionality, changes you make in one layer will be reflected in any other layers that are linked to it. Let me show you what I mean. I'll create a shape using the ellipse tool. Let's go to the commands menu and choose duplicate linked. This will create a linked copy of the first shape and place it on its own layer. Let's separate them so we can see more clearly. I'll create another duplicate link. All right, now we have three shapes to work with. In the layer menu, you can see a new option called show links. Let's click on it and make it active. With one of our shape layers selected, you can see the parameters that are common for linked layers. Each one can be enabled or disabled according to your needs. Let's take a closer look. One of the linked parameters is visibility and opacity. I'll click on the three dots at the top left of the layers window and adjust the opacity of this selected layer. It affects the other layers equally. That's because the opacity parameter is linked between the three layers. Let's go back to the layers window. I can turn the visibility on and off and the linked layers will follow suit. Let's try something else. I can adjust the color of the selected shape and it'll be reflected in the other linked layers. I'll undo that for now. You can also unlink individual parameters. For instance, let's say we want to unlink the vector fill parameter. Now, when I change the color for the selected layer, it doesn't affect the other layers because that parameter has been unlinked. Here are some examples of how linked parameters work. Making sure a layer is selected, let's go to the pen tool so we can change the line width. As you can see, it is also changed into linked layers. Let's undo that. Okay, so far so good. We've seen how to unlink a particular parameter. So relinking should be easy, right? Yes and no. While you can easily click on the link icon to disable it, clicking again does not relink that parameter. But don't worry, it'll make more sense with some practical examples. To relink a parameter, you must first make sure that the layer that has the unlinked parameter is selected. Then, in the Layers window, press and hold on one of the other linked layers and drag it down to the square at the left of the unlinked parameter. In this case, it's the Vector Fill. The parameter is now active and linked again. Let's make sure it works. The reason it's set up this way is because the parameter has to be associated with a specific layer. Each parameter is treated completely separately. To demonstrate this further, I'll create a new shape layer. This time I'll make it a square. I'll also give it a different color. At the moment, this layer is not linked to anything else, so I can make changes to it and it won't affect any other layers. But let's say I want to unlink one of the parameters of a circle layer and link it to the square layer instead. Let's see how that works. I'll select the circle layer and unlink the vector fill parameter again. Now when I change the color of the other circle layers, it's no longer reflected in the first circle layer. 
Let's select the first circle layer again and go to the layers window. I'll press and hold on the square layer icon and drag it down to the vector fill parameter. The circle assumes the color of the square because the vector fill parameter of the square is now associated with or linked to the first circle layer. Now we have a single layer that has parameters linked to two separate layers. The other parameters remain linked to the circle layers. Only the vector fill parameter is linked to the square layer. This is one of those things that becomes intuitive the more you actually do it. Hopefully it now makes sense to you. If not, please let me know in the comments section below. I've only covered the tip of the iceberg for what's possible with linked layers. I'm sure you'll find lots of creative ways to use this new function. I'll be creating more videos soon, covering other features in Affinity Photo 1.9. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing in general, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.